let me ask you a question. Whether you're a killer main, someone who splits your time 50-50 between survivor and killer, or a survivor main who only plays killer when you get a killer daily. How many of you have chosen to bring a hex perk, for example, hex ruin, into a trial only for this to happen? Look at that! Literally spawned on top of the fucking totem! Wow, I'm gonna lose it now. Oh! That should not happen! It's frustrating and has probably made you scream, why even bother? It's just a waste of a perk slot. Trust me when I say, you're not alone. Hex perks are powerful perks that can easily sway the game in one direction or the other. Depending on the perk, it can be crucial for the survivors to cleanse the hex totems and remove the perk if they want any chance to survive. This is a good mechanic in theory, but is one that is heavily flawed to the point where the risk of bringing a hex perk will far outweigh the rewards. That's not to say it's impossible for a hex tome to last an entire game, but the odds of that happening are extremely slim. Dead by Daylight has a habit of relying on RNG in so many of its systems to make the game work that they end up stacking in unfavorable ways and end up hurting the players more often than not. So join me as I give you five ways that Dead by Daylight could fix hex totems so that they can be more reliable for killers while also giving a more interactive experience for the survivors. A few things to note. Hex totems still need to have a risk for the killer to bring. So this video isn't about uber buffering them to the point where there are unstoppable perks and next to impossible for the survivors to cleanse. Think of old school Ruin Undying, where it sometimes took five totem cleanses to get rid of Ruin. That was unbearable and not fun for anyone. However, the hex totems should still weigh in favor of the killer as they are tied to the killer's perks in the trial. Also, whenever there's an issue in Dead by Daylight, they tend to create perks as a band-aid and call it a day. So in this video, I will not be altering any existing perks, nor will I be creating any new perks. We also had some new information regarding totems with the recent Resident Evil reveal, such as the new Jill perk counterforce, as well as boon totems coming sometime down the road. As they have not made their way to the live server, however, I will not be discussing them in this video. Finally, I will be treating all five of these suggestions as individual solutions. So while you could add multiple of these to Dead by Daylight, you would more than likely have to adjust certain aspects here and there, depending on which ideas you incorporate into the game, just to make sure they remain balanced for both survivor and killer. Number one. Totem spawns. This is admittedly the most generic and predictable suggestion on this list, but it's one that is so commonly talked about that I feel it needs to be mentioned. This also ties back into what I was saying about Dead by Daylight relying on RNG to solve all of life's problems. Totems should not spawn in the wide open so they can be seen from across the map. Also, they shouldn't spawn right in front of the survivors. It is beyond frustrating when a survivor spawns into the trial and they are staring face to face with your hex totem before they can even move. It's a free gift to the survivors and a slap in the face to the killer. Hex totems should only spawn in well hidden places so that the survivors have to make a choice. Do we just sit on gens and hope for the best? or do we spend time going totem hunting? I understand that with these maps, there are only so many hiding places that the totems can be, but to keep things less predictable, maybe they can add in some new spawns to compensate for removing the totem spawns out in the open, like in the middle of Pride Rock or chilling in the hallway of Hawkins, etc. Off the top of my head, add a totem spawn in the basement. It doesn't have to be a common spawn, Imagine the choice a survivor would have to make if they had to choose between powering through ruin or going into the killer's basement to remove it. 
it adds risk to taking away a killer's perk opposed to it being a free gift given to the survivor as soon as they spawn into the match this could also potentially shake up the perk meta as totems would be harder to find you could potentially see more people running a perk like detective's hunch to help find those elusive hex totems this is a recent clip from my twitch stream where i not only immediately found the killer's first hex totem but his second one as well i genuinely felt so bad for this killer See what I mean by bullshit spawns? Both, what, 10 feet away from each other? Killer, I'm so sorry. Number two, totems remain dull for the first 60 seconds of a match and cannot be cleansed. I know many of you already want to debate the cannot be cleansed part of this, so start debating in the comment section down below. When I first came up with this idea, I had it so totems could still be cleansed. But the more I thought about it, I changed my mind because I felt this could add another layer to the early game for the survivors. One common complaint you hear is that survivors have nothing to do in the early game. So they understandably go right to a gen and start M1 and like superstars. Oh my God, gen rush, cried the killer. This wouldn't completely solve that issue, but it could potentially help slow down gens a little bit in the early game. By totems remaining dull and not lighting up until after the first 60 seconds, it makes it so the totems can't be easily spotted across the map like they currently can be. The bright orange fire can be a dead giveaway for a totem, whereas if it was a doll, it would blend in with the surroundings more easily and make it tougher for the survivor to find. By making it so totems can't be cleansed in the first 60 seconds, the survivors will now have to remember where a totem was once they discover a hex perk is in play in the trial. This will slow down the survivors a little bit as they can either backtrack to the totem once the 60 seconds are up, or if it's a swift and someone calls out ruin, they can waste time and sit by the totem to wait to see if it lights up. If it does, they can then cleanse it. If not, they have to go searching for the killer's ruined totem. This makes it so the game slows down a bit and the killer won't be down to two to three perks within the first 60 seconds of the game. Number three, with each gen completion, the glow of the hex totem brightens. When the trial begins, or after the first 60 seconds, if we include the previous suggestion, and the survivors still have five gens to complete, the fire on the hex totem would start off small. A little tiny fire. Think of like, um, like a tea light candle. This little fire would be noticeable if you were standing in front of the totem, but would be very hard to spot from a distance. This would once again be designed to force the survivors to actually seek out totems rather than noticing a flaming ball of skulls from halfway across the map. As each gen is completed though, the hex grows stronger and thus the flame glows brighter and brighter until the fifth gen is completed and the fire burns as bright as it does now in the current game. This way, perks like Devour Hope may have a fighting chance to stay in the trial longer than 20 seconds, but are not impossible for the survivors to find as gens are completed and Devour Hope begins to gain tokens. This balance would give the killer some potential benefit from their perks early on, but make it so it's not a guaranteed death sentence in the mid to end game when everyone is exposed from Devour Hope. Also, by having the totems at full burning intensity at five gens completed, this makes it so perks like Noed shine just as bright as they can be and are more easily found. Number four, a risk reward status effect. 
If you are cleansing a totem within the killer's terror radius, you will be applied a status effect depending on if you finish cleansing the totem or you have to abandon your cause. If cleansed, the survivor is filled with a small burst of hope and is given a 5% haste status effect for three seconds. If they abandon their cause, however, the survivor is filled with dread from the hex remaining in the trial and suffers a 10% hindered status effect for three seconds. With this risk reward, the survivor has to make a decision whether they have time to finish cleansing the totem and get away with the haste status effect or abandon the totem early and flee for their lives. If a survivor chooses to commit and cleanse the totem in the killer's face, they will pay a price for their greed and hope to the entity that the totem they're cleansing is not haunted ground. Number five, requiring an item to cleanse hex totems. This is the most far-fetched idea on this list and would probably never happen, but I think it's a fun concept to at least look into. People are going to compare this to Home Sweet Home Survive, but I admittedly have been hoping Dead by Daylight would incorporate something like this since before that game was even released. Imagine a survivor finds a lit totem. Instead of being able to cleanse it right away, they have to find an item in the map and bring that item back to the totem to cleanse it. For the sake of this video, let's say it's uh, water. Ooh, no, holy water. You bring the holy water back to the totem and begin the cleansing process by pouring the holy water over the hex totem. The holy water would not be something that survivors could bring into the match with them, like toolboxes, medkits, etc. Nor would it be something the survivors could escape with or keep after the trial. For each hex perk used, for example, hex ruin, there would be one guaranteed holy water spawn somewhere in the map. These spawns can be anywhere and, yes, even in the basement. So, if a killer was running Ruin Undying, there would be two holy water spawns. This would add another layer of communicating and planning amongst the survivors. If someone finds a hex totem, they have to either go find the holy water themselves and come back, or if another survivor is running around with the holy water, they need to either lead them to the hex totem or take the holy water from them. The time to cleanse totems would not change, nor would the survivor lose their holy water if the cleansing is interrupted. But the holy water would add another element to the hex totems and another objective for the survivors opposed to just holding M1 on a generator. Dull totems can still be cleansed as normal, so survivors can still get tokens for inner strength and they can avoid noed if they cleanse all five dull totems before the end game. Speaking of noed, the holy water for it would not spawn until noed was active to avoid giving away that the killer has noed in the early to mid game. If all doll totems are cleansed before the end game, there's no noed, therefore no holy water spawn. These are the five ways in which I believe hex totems could be improved within Dead by Daylight. Let me know in the comment section below if you agree or disagree with any of these, or maybe some ideas that you may have to improve hex totems in Dead by Daylight. In the meantime, if you enjoyed the video, hit that thumbs up button and cleanse that subscribe button for more Dead by Daylight content here on YouTube. I also stream on Twitch Wednesday through Sunday and would love to have you stop in. Until then, thank you for watching. Good luck out there in the fog, and we'll see you in the next video.